subscribe to our the various other links. I love the Mary Sue and Rachel Leishman. The Mary Sue is my absolute favorite because she's not as mean spirited as the other uh, idiots at the Mary Sue who just seem like vindictive weirdo chicks. Who um, there's one chick who's Glassman who's got to be like thirty five or forty or something, and um, she's talking about tarot cards, and you look and you're like, dude, you're on, you're you're in your thirties, I, I assume, from this little icon picture. Why are you talking to? Wait, wait. Are you are you seriously talking about tarot cards? This this isn't the nineteen sixty eight, and you're stoned out of your mind on a pound of weed. This is it's it's it, that's like trust the science. Oh well, well not that much science. Anyway, um, so the Captain Marvel two, the the Marveline. Um, here's the thing, uh, and she says, <laughs> so, like I I admire her. I admire her bizarre worldview of this is the movie that fans have been waiting for. <laughs> um, yeah, like they've been waiting for She Hulk on Disney streaming, or I think uh, Ms. This she had a Ms. Marvel had a, a streaming show too. I can't imagine anyone watching it, but um, it's like so. So the fans were were watching these shows. And it's like it's supposed to get you know eight hundred thousand viewers a week or something to be a, a solid hit show, and it gets like two hundred thousand. Like yeah, there's not a whole lot of fans who were who are lining up to see these shows. Anyway, so Captain Marvel 2, um, they did a lot of clever things for this movie because I was out dog walking the other night and I'm trying to wrap my head around why exactly Disney is making this movie to see what their their motivation is. And, um, and you know, they did a lot of clever things. Don't get me wrong, though. Odds are it's still going to be uh, an underperformer, but probably not a bomb. But they what they did that was genius is they figured out a way to mitigate the damages to, to, to set up a soft landing for this movie, which I think if you're expecting this movie to bomb, it's I don't think it's going to bomb. I think they've, they've done a lot of clever things um, pretty well. Because uh, to start with, if you remember, Captain Marvel was a billion dollar movie. Brie Larson has a fan base out there, which is is weird to think of, but um, oh, keep in mind it was before it was after the Avenger uh, movie, uh, Infinity something War, I think, and but it was before the biggest movie in I believe film hi- history, uh, or recent film history at least, because I think Gone with the Wind might have been for the time a bigger movie, but Avenger Endgame was a two billion dollar movie. So um so yeah of course it's it's the penultimate movie before the the two billion dollar movie yeah it's gonna get it it's gonna like oh you need to see Captain Marvel I understand it's like no <laughs> no you you don't need to see any of this like all the I look back at all those movies and think like yeah so that was a, the event the last two Avengers movies because those are really mediocre movies I mean they're nothing that you go back and rewatch or stand the test of time like those are just pretty solidly mediocre films it's it's weird that people are if you're enthusiastic over movies like that then that says a lot about the state of um of Hollywood. So first of all, what they did was they dialed the budget back for this movie quite a bit. Um, so keep that in mind. It's, uh, their first movie was like 150 to $180 million, Captain Marvel. And this movie is $130 million so far. So that is a, a, a huge, huge drop. So what they did was actually really smart was they made this a lower budget kind of girl power, kid-friendly film, because, I mean, the girl who's playing Ms. Marvel is, is in her 20s, but she's playing, like, a, a high school kid, I guess. The thing is, there are some factors in play. Why they made this movie is because they kind of had to, because Captain Marvel did a billion-dollar, you know, movie. Brie Larson had to have a sequel, and and if you've noticed, quite a bit of time has passed, and we're not in a hurry to get, the, oh, the woo flu, the woo flu. Yeah, yeah, I, I guess. I mean, but you could always, you know, like do like Tom Cruise and and wear masks and whatnot and make the. It, they were not in a hurry to make this sequel because they knew that that billion dollar Captain Marvel, um, that was a unique set of circumstances. Like they're not stupid. They're not going to make a. Oh, we need to up the budget on this. And make a two hundred twenty million dollar movie. It's like yeah, that's that's going to be a waste of money. So they they go the other direction and make a hundred thirty million dollar movie. Because they had to give Brie Larson the sequel, otherwise it would have been kind of an admission that, yeah, something is wrong at Disney, and very much something is wrong with Disney Marvel. But they also know that the bloom is off the rose for the Marvel Universe, which it very much is. When was Avengers Endgame? Was that like 2019 or something? That was the end of the Marvel Universe for a lot of people it's it's like the end of star wars was the um that last disney movies um trilogy that uh jj uh abrams and uh johnson made it's like yeah after that there's there's no more disney star wars and as you can see by the streaming numbers nobody's watching uh star wars and they just i mean they just f star wars in the a um the thing is uh the bloom is off the rose from the marvel universe 
but to be fair, it really doesn't have much to do with Brie Larson one way or the other. She did what she was put in those roles to do. You can't get mad at her when Disney put her in that role and told her to play this character. If they wanted somebody more dynamic, they would have cast somebody more dynamic. They wanted this kind of blank, um, wooden, blank slate type of character. And that, the theory on that, you know, I don't really know. If I had to guess, because maybe the other characters in the Marvel Universe had a lot of personality. They had some comedic skills. They had something. They had they were strong personality characters. And the other girl, um, Scarlett Johansson, was playing, playing the TNA, the sex pot type of character. So you didn't want Brie Larson to come in there, I guess, and take stuff away from from them. Maybe so they 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 cast this this actor who's very wooden. I that's the only thing I can come up with because otherwise you're saying like, well, wait. I mean, even that's not a very good explanation. But it, but the fact of the matter is, is like, yeah, but they did put her in the role and they did tell her to to play this kind of very stiff character. And, and like, she's got a rocking body. That's the thing. She does a fitness shows on YouTube, and she is like, you'll watch, you, you'll see her, and you'll be like, oh, God, I got I to gotta get in shape. I got to stop eating carbs. Like, this chick has not seen a carbohydrate in 10 years. She is in phenomenal shape. And they played that down. Uh, they played a lot of things down for her. For her Because, I mean, like, they're presenting her the way they want to present her, even if it doesn't really make sense to me. But maybe someone has a better explanation for, for why they, like, they downplayed her as a comedic actor, as a sexual character, is she's just this blank slate. Like I heard that was a theory for um, what's that the the, the BDSM movie, the books, um, A Shade of Grey or something like that. And they chose the actor, the the actress for the role, because she was kind of a blank slate character that people could women could envision themselves as or something like that. Anyway, so Marvel had its run. It was okay. It's gonna have the same place in history as the Toxic Avenger series. Uh, they made a musical. Uh, which I guess would be the Toxic Avenger Part 5 in 2018. <laughs> you can check that out on uh, Solar. Um, yeah, so uh, it the Marvel movies have got, had huge budgets, but I, like realistically, it's as far from Shakespeare as uh, Lloyd Kaufman's films were, which and I think about it, I actually re more trauma movies by now than Marvel movies. And if you're going to go watch trauma movies, make sure you get the unedited version, or not the versions... There are, they put some on cable and those those cable edited versions you don't they they cut out all the the funniest scenes where um who's that that Japanese guy no theater guy he's like there there is I can't I guess I can't even describe the scenes um but there there you get the unedited versions you can you can VPN them online and uh you know and they're just friggin' classics um so Brie Larson has fans and I know how weird that that sounds but uh not for movies like this like the people who saw Captain Marvel it was probably the same male audience that sees all these kind of stupid stupid movies and the females that were there were because the guys dragged them to go see the movies and they paid for the movies and, and the chicks are just there because their boyfriends took them in the movies they, they kind of didn't have a choice about that kind of stuff which is is a uh, like chicks who make movies in Hollywood refuse to address that issue. Like, yeah, you know, boyfriends just drag chicks to movies, and the opposite doesn't doesn't work for some reason. That's uh, who's a chick who made the Charlie's Angels movie. She she didn't seem to want to uh, come face to face with that, and as a consequence, her movie bombed. Uh, anyway, so um, yeah, Brie Larson has as fun. So my theory is they prepared this movie for a soft landing. Because they only gave it a hundred thirty million dollar budget, and I, I kind of look at it and go, yeah, it probably crept up from that a little bit. But it being a kids' movie changes the expectations and it lowers the expectations. But to me, and I hate to say this, it looks like a much better movie than Captain Marvel. Like, I, I would, I mean, the only way I'd pay to see a movie would be if. You know, if somebody wanted a review for it or something, but otherwise, I'd just go sail high seas for it. But if I was going to go see a movie, I would see this over the earlier one. They both look like bad movies, but at least this, at least this looks like a fun bad movie where the first Captain Marvel just looked like. So she's this serious chick, this skinny 110 pound chick who's running around for um, two hours, you know, doing CGI effects. That doesn't look like a whole lot of fun. This movie at least looks like it has potential. For fun and then if it's a kids movie too that that's good and the thing is disney doesn't care if it makes money as long as it doesn't hurt the brand and call me crazy i think this movie is going to do just fine uh brie larson as a real superhero is a bridge too far for people but in a, and the thing is it came off her bizarro ageist sexist racist comments where like she was openly saying the most 
abhorrent, disgusting things. And then you had her fans were, were defending her. Um, it was just friggin' bizarre. And that was a little bit too close to that movie, so people kind of went into it with a with lowered expectations. But if she's playing a in a campy kids comedy, it kind of seems like a, a better role for her because she can kind of play the straight man to, to the other two chicks can can be the comedic elements. And um, I mean, it's like relatively it'll do just fine, considering that it is what it is. It's a way to give her a sequel that they have to give her because, you know, girl power or something. But it's also not a 200 to $250 million sequel, which that would be a, a huge bomb. At most, this movie is going to be a small underperformer, not Dresden meets Nagasaki. I think people are really kind of ready to vibe with a kid-friendly comedy. It's obviously not for me, and it's probably not for you. And that's the thing about watching move people talk about movies on YouTube. It's like you can watch people talk about movies for movies that you have no intention of seeing, <laughs> because usually it's going to be more interesting than the movie itself. The thing is, for me, it's not even worth going sailing for when it comes out, because I hate everyone involved in the movie. And Disney is run by lizard people who sacrifice babies to Moloch. But the regular people will probably enjoy this little bit of the humiliation ritual known as cultural Bolshevism. Disney wants to go in this super bullshy direction, and the cattle love their their soy slop, their bread and circuses. More high fructose corn syrup for my Uber Eats and my prawn, and I gotta play video games, and more, 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 more. Some CGI was drawing pictures of uh, Chinese, Russian, and American soldiers, and the, and the, the Chinese and Russian are, are lean, fit, you know, standard propaganda, and the American soldier's like a 400-pound guy eating a burger. <laughs> Anyway, so until the audience, which is like, you really can't get mad at that because you're like, oh, yeah, fair enough, fair enough. So until the audience dips out of this cancer, Disney is just going to increase um, the woke. You think you're waiting for people to awaken. Um, a week from now, I think people will have forgotten all about Anheuser-Busch. Like, oh, it's stock lost $4 billion. Yeah, it'll be back. It'll be fine. People will forget all about Anheuser-Busch, Budweiser. It's like they forgot about Hershey Chocolates. Like her, she, or she, or something like that. I don't know. Like every corporation is woke. You just, the the only thing that would really turn this stuff around is if you got a buy locally movement, buy small co companies. Um, like you set up like a, a stock index or something for you know ultra small cap companies or, or something like a movement that was started where you were you were you set up websites and you're preferentially buying small small companies. Small local producers, uh, like on, on in the case of everything, even like you could even make like people, believe it or not, people made boots um, <laughs> in small, very uh, small, uh, tiny little factories. So like until that happens, until people really have a come to Jesus or come to Odin, whatever, or maybe come to Mars would be more appropriate. Don't say anything in the comments moment. Um, and, f you know, like look at Anheuser-Busch and go, oh, these companies are really dead to us. But not only Anheuser-Busch, but like Nike and, and every mainstream company. Jack Daniels, and it's like, ah, oh, well, you know, we don't really need all of that. You can probably find all of that stuff locally. But it's the thing is, it takes like an almost religious movement to get people fired up about that. So, you know, two months from now, you look at Anheuser Busch, it's like, oh, they're they're doing just fine. People are still back to drinking Budweiser, which is like just horrible, horrible beer. Especially the thing is, in the '90s, that was the rise of microbreweries, and um, there's no shortage of just the world's best beer can be found at a microbrewery just the just amazing amazing beer like so much better than the standard um lager like the the mainstream american beers that were popular like budweiser coors um the other ones miller that's just the lightest of lightest of rice lager garbage there's a whole world of beer out there and stouts and ales and 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 porters and hefeweizens and all these different even lagers like but there's like higher quality lagers and then there's this like lower quality lager. And now with the world of microbrews, there's no need to buy an Anheuser-Busch when you can you can buy all, from all these other companies. Or you can find a local winery and it's like you don't need to know their politics and just go back into drinking wine. Anyway, so, um, like this humiliation ritual just continues and continues and continues to the point where a few, a few years from now, the Marvel heroes are going to be like just openly BLT or in like, like threesomes and, and it's like... It, how people rejected that Bros movies by uh, that that guy Eichenwald, whatever. Um, a couple years from now, it's like, oh, the Bros movie. It's like you're gonna look at a, a Marvel movie and you're gonna see that kind of that stuff. And like, oh, what do, you, what do you mean these are conservative right wing values? It's like, yeah, that's how fast the window shifts. Um, I mean, like until you stop paying for it, 
they just will increase it and double down and, and people will just go back to like, one of these days I'm going to cancel my Disney Plus subscription. We're all looking around like, yeah, it was five years ago. What the hell are you talking? Uh, one of these days or someone in Telegram was saying something like, they're trying to talk to normies and this is what it's like talking to normies. So like all uh, during the NFL stuff, all these the, the normies who love their sports ball, they go, yeah, I'm going to wear an American flag shirt to the next NFL game. And you're just looking around, you're like just rolling your eyes, clapping your forehead, like, sweet Jesus, give me strength. This is what it's like dealing with these people. Like, oh, okay, great. And you go pay your $100 ticket to go to the NFL. Great. That's, you're really showing them, buddy. Yeah, I'm going to wear American. F okay. Have you considered not going to the NFL and just never watching mainstream sports ever again? Have you considered like maybe going outside and just, like putting a bullet in your TV. You considered that, not watching sports. Instead, going outside and engaging in physical exercise. Has that ever crossed your mind? Oh, what a novel concept. Are you saying I should start walking and stop watching people who hate me perform feats of, uh, of athleticism? Yeah, that's just a, a wild thought. You don't actually have to watch sports. You don't have to drink Anheuser-Busch. You don't have to buy Nike. There's like alternatives to all this stuff. You don't have to watch TV at all. Like the idea of watching the, those kind of TV shows, like I got to watch my... No, it's all over. It's like it's, it's a it's you're supporting demons. You're supporting people who sacrifice um, figurative souls, at least to uh, to Lucifer. Anyway, like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys all next episode.